Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Coffee Moaning. We are on GCSE uh, officials. Um, so you've got me, I'm afraid, which is kind of fortuitous in many ways. Um, how are we all? Good morning. Welcome. If you're listening on podcast, welcome to Coffee Moaning. Here in the UK, this is the morning of this morning. This morning is all about this morning. Um, yeah, it was so. Did anyone else get that? I don't know if you, you're regular watchers of this morning. After hearing the music, it just took me straight back to Canterbury circa. When did this morning start? Was it back in 19. I don't know, 20. No, 19. I, I was at university. Bizarre. Anyway, guys, how are you all? I hope you had a good weekend. Obviously, this is, uh, this is you know, we've just, Holly Willoughby has just done uh, the early 80s. Was it the early 80s? Wow. Good morning, everyone. Evening, Andrea Crash. Evening, Sarah Lawler. Uh, morning, Pink Lady. Uh, interested in some of your comments I've just seen flying up there, so I'd be quite keen to have a, a natter with you too. Um, yeah, hatred, 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 all, all not good. Now, look, one of the things to say from the outset here, we're going to talk about Holly, obviously Holly Willoughby, co-presenter of This Morning on the UK show, uh, formerly presented by both her and Philip Schofield. Philip Schofield, who's resigned, Philip Schofield, who's caught up in something of a sort of um, shitstorm, if you like, a scandal of sorts, um, though for many, it, there's no scandal at all. It's two consenting adults having uh, an affair. I think the only thing that tugs in the opposite direction to that is if it was simply that, then that's not in and of itself a resigning uh, situation. So I think that's where the confusion resides. It's not that it's not necessarily just that, but I think one, it's hard to talk about this and pretend there's not confusion. You can't have a story, I suppose my problem with all of this is you can't have a story this big and there not be a reason for it being this big. And I think what's happening is there's an attempt to suggest that the story's this big because of the reaction to how big the story was at the beginning. What's happening here is truth and, and it's like we're time traveling. It's really weird. It's really weird what it's like. It's actually from a, if you were a media student, what's happening with this story is fascinating. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. But anyway, we'll get onto that in a little while. We'll get onto that. Um, there's all sorts of, you know, um, there's all sorts of mental health issues involved in this from so many different perspectives, um, all of which are um, valid, all of which are important. Um, and yet at the same time, it's interesting watching how um, discussions around mental health are becoming sort of used in a fashion, I think, used in a fashion to potentially close down just normal questions or conversations or what have you. All of that said, the amount of hate, the amount of homophobia, the amount of, though, as I've said on Friday, this is, you know, it having an issue with what's happened here with Philip or a potential issue with what's potentially happened does not make you a homophobic, far from it. Um, even though lots of people are saying it is, I, I, I disagree. I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. Um, but uh, yeah, the amount of hate, I mean, obviously, I've said it before, it, you've got to be made of titanium. And as I was saying to a uh, dear friend, you, you then have to be made of titanium times three with a nougat centre to not be, uh, you know, affected by this, whoever you are, whoever you are. So it, to, to that extent, one has to have uh, just human compassion for everyone involved. But what I don't think you can do is have... The phrase walking on eggshells, you can't create a situation, I don't think, where you're, everyone's so walking on eggshells that you can't ask any questions or have any conversations. And that's all, that's as far as I think it needs to go. That's as far as I think it needs to go. At this stage, we're not going to know. I think for me, you know, it's, it's interesting. I was listening to, um, we're going to talk about what Holly said in a minute. She, it was very, very brief. We're going to talk about Holly, what, Holly, what Holly said in a minute. And I really want to know what you think if you saw it. Um, I was listening to Nick Abbott, who I, who I really, really like, and it was interesting listening to him. He obviously doesn't watch any of the, I, I, the, the hearing this morning, this the tune was so bizarre. It was such an odd moment. It was like take, taken back in time. Um, he doesn't watch any ITV. He very much was not understanding where the problem is, because, of course, there is a lot of, there are a lot of people who just feel this was two consenting adults who, you know, were involved in a relationship. Now, there seems to be a sort of, I find this curious because I don't think anyone would dispute that two consenting adults being involved in any kind of 
romantic or sexual or whatever, that happens. Shit happens. We all get that. Everyone gets that. I don't think anyone has a problem with that. I don't think anyone has a problem with it, it being a homosexual entanglement. If you do, then the problem's with you. I don't, th I, don't think that's, I don't think that's the problem anyone has with this. And I don't think that's where any of the hate's coming from or any of the criticism's coming from. But I think what is happening is that there are arched eyebrows going up around people, yes, you could argue principally involved in the media, who know how, in some ways, the media can be harnessed and used to, um, to ensure that a certain narrative persists or prevails. Um, and, you know, there are various tools for that, you know, like paparazzi shots, like photographs, like, you know, for example, a good example is the photograph taken of Schofield with his mother, a very real, authentic, traumatic moment for his mother. There will have been within it a very real and traumatic and intimate moment between a son and his mother. But you can also tell from the photos, just from the way they've been taken, the way they've been staged, the way they've been framed, that also they have been sat there and they, they are, have been, been put there or they've put themselves there in order to be, to be photographed. That, even that isn't a problem. Even that isn't a problem, having your photograph taken. But pretending that you're, you're you know, that this is sort of happening in real life and you're happen to be, you know, that, 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 kind, of does, that kind of does matter a bit. Um, in something like this, in something, in something like this, you know, that, that suggests that a certain narrative has been push, pushed along. And I think, I think that's where people begin to feel a little bit... Yeah, that's, yeah, Elliot Gonzalez, and the, the son held on to those photos for two weeks. I mean, I think that's where... I just think that's where a lot of people who kind of know how the media works feel frustrated that people who really caring, well-meaning, I'm seeing lots of comments here, well-meaning, um, you know, uh, empathetic people who understandably uh, want to have sympathy on all, for all sides of this um, uh, can get manipulated by the media. I mean, I, 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 think, I think we can all accept that the media manipulates, right? And all I feel with this story is there is a lot of media manipulation going on. Anyway, um, Let's have a look at what you're saying, and then we'll get on to what, what, what she actually said. Um, Hannah Liebschutz, I worry that this story will turn into another Matt Law, Lawyer, Law, Lawyer, Lawyer, I can't pronounce the surname story. What was thought to be an appropriate workplace affair uncovered accusations of assault. Um, I think, was it Pink Lady? I th I saw someone say, look, there's a, you know, there's another guy here who, you know, has had their, their own experience. Um, and, you know, they're staying quiet. I mean, we've talked before, I mean, he's being looked after by legal, I think legal, I think the legal team that's looking after him at the moment is still, is still paid for by Philip at the moment. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, again, I think, I think the problem here is all about the balance of power. It's not about age gaps. It's it, uh, uh, unless, and of course, if anything happened underage, and I think we're being a little bit, what's the word? insincere if we don't accept that much of the details around the beginning and the breaking of this story was around, well, what age did everything? And, and it, it seems to be the, the most, un I suppose here's what ha what's happening. It feels like the most uncomfortable aspects of the story are getting shunted to the back. So that what we're sat with is quite clearly someone who is under duress, under, uh, under siege, Philip, um, you know, yeah, looking at, looking at what his set of circumstances are. And it feels like the very, you know, some of the questions, the probing questions that needed to be, to be asked have, have been kind of forgotten. And, and, and so that I think, and I think that, that in and of itself is, is troubling. Brush, brushed under a carpet is a phrase uh, that could be used. Tra la la, just let Holly get on with it. She probably didn't even want to make a statement. If it happened in our lives with a friend, we wouldn't need to announce that upset brief statement and move on. Now, in terms of Holly and her statement, I, I, you know what, I was really, I was, I was, impressed. I thought she held it together. I thought she didn't get overly, um, what's the word, lovey. I didn't think she, um, I mean, what do you read into the fact that she didn't actually mention his name at all? Didn't, did, she didn't say Philip, did she? Um, 
she, I mean, you know, you're going to be a, per, you're either going to like media lovies or not like media lovies. And I think sometimes that, that that is, that is one of the problems too, is like, oh, media types and all that kind of stuff, which, you know, we agree with, we're a bunch of total wankers, the vast majority of us. But um, I thought she dealt with it incredibly, um, I thought she was professional, I thought she was cogent. Don't, don't beat around the bush. Every single word that came out of her mouth will have gone past about 35 different lawyers. Um, so, and that's not to say it's not what she felt. She will have said, this is what I want to say. And they will have passed it through the filter of, uh, you know, legalese and, uh, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's really key that she says things like, for example, they themselves, i.e. Philip, felt they had to resign. Because I think it's a really important part of the story that um, it's established for whatever reasons, I don't know why, uh, well, we can all have a guess, um, that uh, he made the choice himself rather than him being forced out. So I think that's clear. I think she made a very important gesture towards a production team. She called it the family. I think that will possibly rile a number of people who were also actually in some of the papers over the weekend talking about the, the atmosphere on the production, not even around Philip, but just the atmosphere. Um, I think it's interesting that we talked about this briefly in the No Name Sunday show. You know, what's toxic to one person isn't toxic to someone else. And then you get into a situation of, come on, man up. What, you know, what can't you take? You can't take a bit of bants and all that kind of stuff. I think, you know, definitions of toxic cultures are subjective, for sure. And I think if, you, if anyone was in a newsroom, and I was for two years, if you're in a newsroom for any period of time, you have the edges knocked off you in a severe fashion. A severe fashion. And so, you know, it could be that perhaps on the more newsy side of things, the culture felt a little bit more brisk and what have you. But, you know, that again, so toxic culture is quite a, a subjective concept. So I think if you feel like you've been hard done by uh, in your experience of working on this show, I think being described as the fam big family we are could rile you. It could rile you. But I think it was it was interesting. She, you know, she talked about her disappointment. She said she was shaken and she was troubled that she, like the rest of us, was full of questions. And I think what's interesting is she said she was full of questions. And I think what's really important, and I think it's really important for even, you know, some people are commenting here about, let it just go, let it just go. It's all right to ask questions. It has to be all right to ask questions. As long as they're not asked in a bullying fashion or, in a, you know, but you, I just ask questions. You know, teachers ask questions of kids. You could argue that because they keep asking the same kid the same questions about, I don't know, the times tables, are they bullying them? No, they're just, it's ask, you're right, you know, to ask questions are right. And even Holly said that. We've been full of questions. Um, uh, she talked about having her and the viewers, having given love to someone who was not telling the truth. So let's not let, again, so a couple of key points here. It's all right to have questions. It's come from Holly's mouth. It's all right to have questions. It's come from Holly's mouth that he wasn't telling the truth. So here's a simple question, guys. If he wasn't telling the truth, and that's, that goes to the heart of what's caused this huge kind of explosion, if you like, how can we trust for sure that everything he's still saying is the truth? And that's not to question whether he's feeling what he's feeling. He may well is. But it's that thing, isn't it? It's like when a child cries wolf. You're like, ah, oh, see, you've made it a bit difficult for us now. We want to believe you, but it's, di it's more difficult now. But you can, say, you can say that in a compassionate way. We've all said that to our children. Jane Othman, why resign if innocent? It, it, seems like a, it seems like a curiously simple question, that. But it does go to the heart of all of it. If for me, what, I mean, if I was to ask one question, it would be like, why exactly and specifically have you resigned outside of whether this has become too much for the show? Because let's, I know, I know the suggestion was that it has become too much of the show, too much for the show, the, the, the publicity become too much. But whatever the publicity was then is nothing compared to what it is now. Uh, she then hugged um, Jodie Marsh alongside her and they said, let's be the family that we uh, are. Let's start a new chapter uh, with warmth and magic. I mean, at that point, I think a lot of people who can't stand media types will be putting their finger down their throat and vomiting everywhere. Because let's face it, warmth and magic. Two very loaded words, warmth and magic. If I had to give you just one sec, there's just someone at the door. Oh, 
Bear that thought, guys. Have a chat amongst yourselves. I'm going to say one of the things I would say that is almost noticeably absent from an awful lot of television, both behind and in front of the screen, is genuine warmth. So I think it's interesting that they've used those words. Because, <laughs> you know, as a kind of media family, we kind of warmth and magic, you know, it, it, I always kind of go, oh, wow, what, they, they were so nice. They were genuinely warm and lovely. Um, so I think th those are important words. So, you know, it, it, was, it was kind of, it was anodyne. It, there was nothing surprising in it. Uh, but I thought, to be brutally honest with you, I thought she, she dealt with it very well. I thought, what did you think, guys? I thought she, I think, yeah, Lee Doran, I think she's, she's genuinely her. Of course she is. I mean, it, it's apparent. And, you know, there's the professionalism, uh, there's the professional her, there's the personal her. We'll never know the extent to which the personal. Of course, I think the big problem here is that lots of people are saying, well, she knew, and if you knew of a rumour, I mean, a rumour is a rumour. A rumour isn't a fact. Um, and we, um, you know, sadly, we will never know. This idea that this inquiry will answer everything, it won't, it won't, it won't. And, it's, and it won't necessarily not answer everything because it's a, you know, it's a bust flush from the get-go. It's like, how can you? All you can do is ask someone a question and they say yes or no. I think where things could get more meaningful, for me, I think the big, the big issue with this is less about the age difference and what he said and what he didn't say. It's whether there's a culture of... Um, you know, power imbalance. I think for me, when people start to be moved from productions and stuff like that, that needs to be interrogated. Make sure that didn't happen due to an inconvenience or due to uh, the ability of someone with more power to be able to push someone off somewhere else. You need to, you need to interrogate that. All these suggestions of taxi journeys and, uh, and, and let's not forget, you know, again, these original things that seem to be sort of have passed down the conveyor belt and been forgotten. You know, the idea that the person in question originally, I think, you know, was demonstrating at times seeming quite sort of distressed. There was that moment at some sort of event, wasn't there, where they were kind of a little bit irrational and kind of demonstrating that, you know, looking into the duty of care. What was the duty of care? And I think that's what's going to be talked about at the House of Commons tomorrow in the Select Committee and what have you. Um, and I think that's where it all needs to be honed in on. And I have talked about the fact that, you know, obviously the bigger question is to what extent did Philip know, you know, this person uh, prior to them being on production? And again, to how can one get to that with this inquiry? I don't think the inquiry can do it. But how did you all think Holly performed? Those of you who've seen her, how did you think, you think, how did you think she performed? I, th I, th I thought she... I thought she did well. Uh, Faith, agents dropped in too quickly. There's much more to the story that we are not being told yet. I mean, Eamon Holmes, in, in an, an inimitable, colourful fashion, has uh, sort of uh, stated or blasted, has blasted these interviews and uh, dubbing them lies, lies, lies. Um, and, uh, you know, and again... <laughs> The danger here is the danger. It's interesting, actually, that there was a piece. There was a piece yesterday with about three or four non sort of Eamon Holmes types talking about their experience of working on on the production. But in terms, I think Eamon is talking specifically about Philip. And okay, let, let's maybe run with the idea that perhaps Philip didn't talk to many members of the sort of civilians in the in the production or the crew, and so really it's only other celebs, for want of a better expression, that have got a true true sense of who Philip was, then, you know, it's going to be easy to, because they're not Philip, and because Philip was top of the kind of cake, if you like, and was the anchor presenter, anyone who criticises Philip and is a presenter, you're going to, it's very easy to say, umbrage, grudge, you know, schadenfreude, bitter, you know, it's easy to say all of that, because you're not the guy who was the main anchor on the show. So everyone, you could, you could argue everyone is bitter, because if you're on production, you're not a present. You know what I mean? I mean, there's a, it, it, it's interesting. Anyway, so um, Eamon Holmes has, has squealed lies, lies, lies. There's really interesting. Did anyone see it on Sky News earlier this morning? Um, an in interesting doorstepping with the uh, exec on this morning, Martin Frizzell. And um, <laughs> when asked about the toxic culture, he said, I find aubergines toxic. 
I think it was I think it was a stab at a joke, a sort of a bit of a surreal joke. But I think as soon as he said aubergines, I was just thinking inappropriate. I was thinking inappropriate to pull in that kind of a bloody, you know, emoji into the into the debate. It just it doesn't feel right. He was trying. To, I think he was trying to be funny. It, I don't know. I sort of I felt the tumbleweed. They got tum they got aubergines on the brain. It was an interesting moment. I don't know if anyone else. It reminded me of Drop the Dead Donkey. Does anyone remember that? Does anyone remember that? I feel for Phil's mum, Linda, Linda, Linda Fissett. I feel for Phil's, Phil's mum. And you know what? I posted this on the last night because I was really, if I'm honest, I was really pissed off with the manipulation of those photos. I, I, I still am. Pissed off for his mum and pissed off for everyone who's going to look at those images and quite justifiably feel huge compassion for his mum. Um, and I don't know, that just something about it felt so spectacularly staged uh, and manipulative. And I think that's what I talk about, what I mean when I say, you know, media students, if anyone's running a media course, just, just look at the way this story's been, this, this whole thing's been covered. I mean, interestingly, talking to some youngsters, the very act of Philip using a, a vape softened the blow for huge numbers of young people who were just more kind of, in a sense, enamoured with the idea that he was using a vape that they all use. Weird. Um, so yeah, I you know I just that 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 was my thing. I I feel really sorry for Philip Schofield's mum, and especially if you think of what's you know what's happened with you know with her other son too. And so I don't know. I just felt there was something about that photo that just felt a bit like no, well, this is a step too far actually. A little bit like. I know, obviously, lots of people saying, you know, Caroline Flack's mum came out and, 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 you know, reached out and said, look, got careful, guys. Incredibly sweet, incredibly kind and incredibly interesting, but still doesn't change my belief that he shouldn't have reached to the Caroline Flack comparison um, at all. I'd be curious to know if she would have uh, contributed to the debate if he hadn't invoked it. Um, and as I said before, I said, you know, if he's going to do an interview which of course he's entitled to. I think talk about your mental health in your own terms. I mean, he does a bit, but in your, in your own terms. I think in, for me, again, the invoking of a big, incredibly loaded, incredibly, um, what's the word, polarizing kind of story. Like, you know, there's lots of people who believe that, you know, Caroline Flack was terrible and da da da, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, to, to, to home in on something like that. Is, is tricky, and whilst you know, again, Eamon Holmes can be shut down absolutely as oh, you're just you're not you're not at the gig anymore, you're not the anchor, you're not the presenter, and what have you, what have you. It's a very bold thing to come out and say lies, lies, lies. He doesn't just say lies, lies, lies. He also says, he also, I mean, this is quite astonishing. He says he calls out for anyone who's kissed the axed ITV star to come forward. I mean, you know. Philip Schofield wasn't watching this morning, apparently, uh, you know, a story, uh, it was released to the press again, that he would find this triggering. I just think it's really interesting if you just do look at the, the way in which these stories break and the way in which the stories are sort of hit us and in what order they hit us. Um, I think it's interesting. Um, Michelle, would this have come out if the super injunctions hadn't been about to expire? Well, Michelle, there is a big debate as to whether there are any super injunctions. And given the nature, the complex nature of the person in question, the lover in question's uh, circumstances, it sometimes sounds like, um, it, it feels like you might not need a strict super injunction in place. Elliot, I like Eamon, but that call for people to come forward felt childish to me. This is, this is, one, of the, this is one of the issues, I think. Sometimes it's like... I don't know, it's like you feel Eamon has a, a strong point or has a sort of counterpoint that's a, a valid counterpoint and then he kind of sort of overcooks it a bit, doesn't he? Um, Ellery Jones, I wonder if Philip's wife will divorce him now, of course, all thoughts still with his, his wife and his daughter. Um, I thought one thing I suppose I did slightly notice in um, Holly's address was the moment she said, and we were all seeing or feeling, or we're all aware of the toll it's taking on his or their mental health. I mean, again, we're in that incredibly complex situation where we have to be really careful, rightly so, really understanding, but at the same time, I think it's really important that where perhaps this story is being massaged and manipulated in order to get a certain response from people, 
that we're allowed to, you know, potentially, you know, draw some attention to that or discuss it or, or, or have, a, have a conversation about it. Uh, you know, to have a conversation is not to be saying, you're this, you're that. You know, he can't be judged. He hasn't, you know, no crime has been committed or, uh, at this stage. Um, all the questions are around, well, why why have you resigned then? If it's so, if, if it's all as innocent as we're all saying, why have you resigned? I'd like to know that. It, it, you know, it, I, th I thought it was interesting. Someone was, there was a piece somewhere the other day about affairs and workplaces. And quite rightly, it said, no one's under any obligation to tell Holly if he's having an affair. But once again, you know, so why resign? Why, why and, and if the resigning was a, the, the story was getting in the way of and distracting and it was becoming too much and it was knocking the this morning sort of brand off centre. Well, nothing's done that more than resigning. Do you know what I mean? I mean? So there are those elements. There are also the questions still to be asked around, how did this person get into the company? How did he get employed? What were the conditions in which he came in? You know, we may never know the narrative before that. Um, and I think it's too easy to just surmise and, and make assumptions, but there's a lot of sort of stuff out there that doesn't look particularly uh, favorable. And I think that's why people have seized upon that. Um, a lot of protesters at the Soap Awards. Did anyone see that in the press? A lot of protesters still at the uh, at the Soap Awards. Um, let's have a look. Alana Scott, BRMC. What does that stand for? That's not so true. My friend said he was going to and did. Depends on if the person maybe says it a lot and doesn't do it, then maybe. Oh, sorry, I did. that was already cross-talking there, sorry. Uh, Emma Walsh, thing is you can care about someone's mental health and still not agree with their actions. Just don't, just do it without the spike. Totally agree. Totally agree. You can disagree. You can ask questions. I mean, it, I mean, I hate to use the analogy, but it's like, are you not going to tell, tell a child off for doing something wrong? Or are you not going to ask questions of your child if you think they've done something wrong because they're threatening to, I don't know, paint the walls with Nutella? I think, you, you know, you just you have to find a way of asking the questions. You have, to find, you have to find a way of asking the questions. Um, I just felt right at the beginning, I, I have to, I have to really, it's really hard to dissuade myself from the idea that almost every single part of this story from Philip's side has been stage managed and orchestrated. Every single part of it. That, that's how it feels. And interestingly, what I would say almost, if he's got a team of helpers and advisors, is try and make everything, try, try from now on to make everything feel less pre-planned or pre-ordained or, or pre-considered. Try and make it feel a bit more real if you're gonna, if you're gonna keep stepping back into the public eye. Because um, you could argue that, you know, why not just step back? Just step back completely and wait. Step back and wait because, you know, Every time he throws something out there or a new photo lands out there or a new bit of the interview is thrown out there, you know, I think a lot of people feel that the media is, is, it's interesting. I, I tell you something I noticed over the weekend, has anyone else, has anyone else felt this? I mean, especially I suppose with Piers Morgan saying, lay off him, lay off him, lay off him. Um, it's interesting that he didn't lay off Megan, did he? He, do he doesn't use the sort of same standard, interestingly. It's like after a week of, you know, having his feet held to the fire, Philip, to lay off him. But it's all right to keep sort of, you know, doubling down on Megan as much as you want. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. It just feels, it does feel that there's sort of, it feels like if you're willing to play the media game. Everyone. Oh, sorry, there's Holly. If you're willing, oh, <laughs> that was interesting. If you're willing to play the media game, Holly plays, interesting. Uh, if you're willing to play the media game, whatever that game is, and I think we're watching some of that game play out now, this is how something awful happening in your life is played out for you. This is how the media soften it. Whereas if you don't play the media game, let's face it, whatever you think of Harry and Meghan, um, they haven't, have they? They haven't played it the way the, they haven't played it the way the media want to play it. I worry about how much we're all controlled by the bloody media. I really do. I worry, watching how people's ebb and flow, trusting, loving, caring, empathetic people are taken this way and that way based on a headline here or this, there, it's, it's interesting. 
It's interesting. Um, do you know what I mean? I, 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 just think, I just think it's interesting. If you're willing to scratch the, the back of the media in a certain way, this is perhaps the way you get dealt with. And if you're unwilling, that's the way you get treated too. So there you go. Yeah, it's a, it's a good parallel, especially as Piers waded in, sort of saying, lay off, Philip. And it's like, you know, well, I, okay, all right, fair dues. That's a fair call. But when people have said that to you after years of you literally not stopping, um, and also, so who have we got? We've got sort of, we've got J Jeremy Clarkson and uh, Piers Morgan standing at the moment in, in Philip's corner. So anyway, I mean, I, I trust and I hope and I, and I believe the, the vast majority of the public can see through the smoke and mirrors a bit. That doesn't mean you, you know, you still have human compassion, absolutely. And it's like, God, look, let's look out for this guy. Let's make sure, you know, let's hope that Philip is getting all of the kind of, you know, therapy and help and care that he deserves. Let's hope that the person in question that he was involved with is likewise getting that. Let's hope his family, Philip's family are getting that. Perhaps Philip's mum too is also getting that. Uh, she's been through a horrendous year, a horrendous year. Um, but, uh, but, you know, and, 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 and I just hope that people can, get, you, know, you can have that compassion, but you can also smell a rat. You know what I mean? I just want, I just want everyone to know that there, there is a lot of manipulation in choice of photos, choice of uh, uh, interviews, who interviews who, when those interviews land, how those interviews are shot, what's being smoked in those interviews, what the lighting is in those interviews, what the tone of those interviews are, is, how bits from those interviews are drip fed out to us over a period of time at certain important points. Uh, all those things are key. They don't just happen and we go, oh, look, that's what's been said. There is something manipulating all of this. So it's just, it's just about, I suppose all I'm saying, if I was a media teacher is have your wits about you. Just have your wits about you. And still, you can have your wits about you, you can ask probing questions, and you can be kind. You can be kind. And I think on that note, we have, we have spoken. I now need to go and get Nat, because a GCSE has been taken. Guys, keep your thoughts coming in down below. Thanks for all your contributions. We do, uh, if you've been listening, you know, um, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> if you want to see uh, this idiot, if you want to see the moment Holly actually interrupted the live, that was quite something, wasn't it? Um, I think it's really important with both with both of the, this one and Fridays and some of the some of the coffee mornings we did in the last couple in the last week or so. The main agenda here is 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 to obviously there's strong when I say skin in the game. You know, Nadia knows him. Nadia has a, a sense of him. You know, she has a relationship with him or not. Um, and uh, there's the experience that people like you know, presenters have of him. There's the experience that viewers have of him. And now there's the experience that we're all having of a story, courtesy of the press. And it's just about being able to discuss all these things. And there are huge, huge questions to be asked. And I think you can't close down questioning by, I mean, I think Eamon uses too strong a language, but you can't close down questioning by saying, you can't ask me anything because it's too, I'm too vulnerable. Because well, we're in this situation. You've made yourself a bit vulnerable by causing the bloody problem in the first place. But, as someone just said, what's the bloody problem? Huh? Anyway, guys, have a lovely day and we will see you anon.